blank forms here. Check me out on Instagram, my previous YouTube videos on using tape loops. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how I like to make tape loops, specifically the most common simple one. So to start, you have the scotch tape, uh, the red variant of scotch tape, not the green one. The red one's a little more heavy duty. Single-sided, not double-sided. The screwdriver, it's a Phillips head mini screwdriver or electronic screwdriver. Uh, and it's magnetized on the end, which is super helpful. And then scissors. These are called detail scissors, but really any kind of small set of scissors will get the job done. And then the tape itself. These are the kinds of tape I use most common for no other reason than that they're easy to get and they sound good to me. But there are many variants out there that you can try. Uh, okay, we're going to get started. So first thing, I get rid of these labels. And now we can kind of see everything involved in the inside of the tape. You've got the tape itself on the two spools. Both of these are going to come in handy. Uh, for this particular tape loop, I'm only going to use one, but there are many variants where you use both. Uh, we have these pulleys on the sides. We want to keep those in there. And then also this little felt piece that keeps the tape close to the tape head. You want to keep that in there as well. And you got to be careful that that can easily fall out and get lost. First up, I'm going to trim the tape off of this spool. Put it back in place. And now from this side, I'm going to just take an indiscriminate length of tape and trim it so that I can use it for the loop. But I don't yet know how long I want the loop to be, and that's the next step. So now I want to take this and loop it around. And one of the first things you want to keep track of is where is the inside and outside of the tape, which you can see in the curvature. It'll naturally fall in such a way that the inside is curved inward. And now I'm gonna run the tape through in the shape that it's gonna be when it's actually finally cut into a loop. And this is how I figure out how long it's going to be. So you can see there's the end of the tape right there, and I'm just going to figure out where it's going to meet the tape to trim the ends. And I think it's going to be about there. So I like to err on the long side, letting the tapes be just a little bit long, a little bit loose. If they're too long, they're going to get stuck on playthrough and stop playing. So you don't want that. But a little bit of extra length results in a bit of warbliness, which I like. And uh, making the loop too short, it just won't play at all. It'll be too tight. So I'm going to trim it right in that spot. And now I have, hopefully, the right length of tape. Now I'm going to tape the two ends together. So I have about an inch of tape off the end of this... Uh, scotch tape thing here. I'm going to trim a very skinny piece that's uh, a half an inch or a little less probably. Just like that. And this might take a few tries. So hopefully you can see I have a piece of tape now. This one's a little longer than I wanted to go, but I think I'll be able to make it work. And now I'm going to take this and put it on the inside, the non-playing side of the tape itself. So I'm going to grab that, hold it in my left hand, and try to line this up. And this is one of the hardest parts. That's not too bad. Hopefully you can see. And now I'm going to line it up with the inside 
of the other part of the tape. I'm actually going to trim a bit of that off because there's just too much. And remember, I am sticking this to the inside of the tape, which I just sort of had to turn the tape inside out to make this work. But basically, as long as you tape on the inside, on both sides, you'll have it right. Okay, so there we go. It's connected. You can probably see if I hold it like that, that it's not perfect. Having it be a little bit wonky sometimes is okay. This one will be a little noisy as it passes through, but sometimes I like that. Um, but I wouldn't want it to be much wonkier than this, otherwise it's going to have some real problems. But this, I think this will work for this video. And you'll also notice I didn't, I try to have as little overlap as possible uh, of the tape itself. I want to have them meet as close as I can right at their tips. Okay, so now I'm going to throw this in to the tape itself, see how the length worked out. All right, so it's in there. I think it's about the right size. It's a little loose. I wouldn't want to go a whole lot looser than that, but I think this is going to work. I'm going to throw the other side of the casing on top, and this part is always a little tricky. Static electricity can really throw things off sometimes at this point. But I think I got it in there. Yep, it's looking all right. Put the screws back in. And the moment of truth, let's see if it will play. That seems to be working. It's a little bit long, like I was saying earlier. You might be able to see it's bunching up a little bit right down here, but it still seems to be playing. And sometimes that bunching up can result in some uh, nice warbling and instability. This seems to be working. All right, so there's your basic tape loop. I have other videos uh, about recording the tape loops and using them, and I'm going to make some more in the coming days and months. But this is a good starting point for making tape loops. So again, your tools, the tape itself, screwdriver, small scissors, scotch tape, and away you go. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Blank Forms. Check out my other videos. Check me out on Instagram. And please hit that follow button down below. Thanks so much.